Back in April, there was a leaked internal staff meeting that came out from IHOP KC that announced that the ministry would be closing down. Uh, they would later walk back those words after the meeting had leaked to say that they were, well, just rebranding, they were restructuring, going in a new direction based off the, you know, the whole Mike Bickle saga that had been going on since October, a story that I have been covering here, uh, it, you know, really extensively since that, that whole thing came out. But, you know, this announcement was met with skepticism from Isaac Bennett, of course, Forerunner Church's pastor. He talked about liability and how IHOP KC didn't want to be sued by these victims. So this was really more about transferring assets, a name change, right? Getting away from, you know, Bickle altogether. And that, you know, raised a lot of eyebrows at the time. They talked about how they were losing $500,000 a month at the organization because of so many donors that were tied to Mike Bickle and that they could not, you know, continue going at the same, you know, pace that they had been, you know, at that rate, they would be done. So they'd have to, I think, cut the staff like 90 something percent. Um, and it would just be, you know, it would be nobody there. Uh, they talked about wanting to, you know, maintain 24 seven prayer. 24 seven prayer is something that, you know, they have really strived to want to continue no matter what happens with IHOP KC in the future. But also they wanted to, you know, shift to more of a, you know, missions-based work for Israel. So, you know, we got the announcements that IHOP U was going to be closing down at the end of the semester, as well as other ministries that would be winding down. What we did not know was Forerunner Church. We did not know that Forerunner Church would be closing. There was no date that was, you know, scheduled for a last service. They didn't make that announcement at any point uh, during that that staff meeting, there was never any other announcement that came out after that. Because remember, they did talk about winding down some ministries, unless they were referring to the church itself. What came as a shock here was that on Sunday, May 19th, it ended up being the final service for Forerunner Church. And I'm going to get into it here. You know, we're going to talk about what Isaac Bennett had to say, what the future of IHOP KC is now that. The church is no more, but I'm also going to touch on what Isaac Bennett said in a sermon just two weeks prior to this on Sunday, May 5th. I hope you'll stick with me for this report. Welcome everybody to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you as always that we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, for those interested, you want to know my story? How did I go blind? How do I operate my entire ministry without being able to see? I made a video that explains it all. You'll find a link to that in the description section of all my videos. And if you enjoy and appreciate the work of this ministry, think about donating to help me out. There's a few different ways you can do that. One, you can just hit the super thanks button on the YT video here, or you can join my Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash not by site news. Link in the description. When you join Patreon, you get all these videos before they hit the main YT platform, so you'll be ahead of everybody else. Also with that, some more cool features that Patreon has to offer. I hope you'll check me out over there. Again, it's patreon.com slash news. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. One thing I want to point out also is that during that staff meeting, at no point did Isaac Bennett talk about how the organization would undergo finally a third party investigation, a real one, not that McNamara report by the Lathrop group that was released back on January 31st, because that was a complete farce. There was nothing that was really in that, that, you know, it was like a, just a, a really soft report. And it was a way for IHOP KC to say, look, see, we did a report. We're good, right? Yeah. Bickle did some bad things. Okay, whatever. Let's just move on. No, uh, it was not thorough. It was rushed. They put it out there really quick and they thought that they could move on. Remember, Eric Valls, who was the spokesperson for IHOP KC at the time, even announced after that report came out that IHOP KC was now out of the crisis mode, <laughs> which it wasn't. And then what did Valls do? Um, he tucked tail and he ran away and said, you know, my work here is done. And, and then he was gone. So 
you know, there was no announcement about a, a true third party investigation. The advocate group had been talking. Elizabeth Herder gave an interview. She talked about how there was a potential that they were going to try and crowdfund this. However, there hasn't really been any follow up to uh, that since that was said. But you would still need IHOP KC to be on board with it, which they clearly were not. They lost a board member uh, recently, um, a pastor that had been part of the board. He talked about how, you know, he was kind of a mediator between IHOP KC and the advocate group, but he couldn't stand it anymore. He had to leave, you know, the management of this. He just, he couldn't stick by anymore. It just seemed like they were at a complete impasse here and there was no way that an investigation was going to be done. So Bennett, you know, again, never mention a third party. Instead, we're going to wind down ministries. It's like trying to escape accountability. I mean, it was just, it was sad to hear this. So what happened on May 5th? I told you I would get into this because it's important to lead up to this announcement that they made on the 19th. But on the 5th, you had Isaac Bennett preaching at Forerunner Church, talking about, and just, this was a shock because he was doubling down, really tripling down on IHOP KC's prophetic history. Some refer to it as simply the PH. And instead of renouncing this prophetic history like he should have done, he doubled, tripled down on it said that we cannot walk away from this. He referenced Bob Jones and that false prophecy that he gave, that he told, you know, Mike Bickle about, you know, and this is just, it was nothing more than just a a glorifying of Jones, Bickle, IHOP KC as a, you know, as a prayer movement, you know, how it started. He even mentions Mike Bickle, you know, Mike Bickle, you know, the founder of IHOP Casey, as if somehow we didn't already know that. Uh, Nothing was made mention here about, you know, Bickle's inappropriate behavior, the allegations. No, this was, we have to hold on to this. We cannot let this go. And then two days later, on the 7th, you had at Hope City KC, which is the, the inner city prayer room that's run by Mike Bickle's sister, Lisa. They held a 25th anniversary celebration for IHOP KC, where they, again, were showing videos of Bob Jones, and they were praising Mike Bickle. Misty Edwards and her family were there. Nothing was mentioned at this celebration of the victims that had been hurt by Mike Bickle over the years. Nothing like that at all. A celebration. When I said at the time, this should have been a funeral. So that got met with all sorts of backlash, and rightfully so. These people just don't care at the end of the day. And then a report, because it's got, look, God, this is what he does, right? All this stuff is being exposed. I've talked about it all year, the exposure of 2024. And I believe it's going to expand even further out than that. But a report came out in the Kansas City Star. Uh, This was about a week after the the so-called celebration of 25 years of IHOP KC. And what it did in this report, they completely debunked Mike Bickle's famous 418 prophecy where, you know, he went to to go, you know, visit Paul Kane's mother, Anna Kane, in the hospital. She was 104 years old. She's in the coma at the time. And she, you know, she wakes up only for, you know, just a, a brief second to, you know, talk about you know, how, how God's going to use, you know, IHOP Casey, you know, referencing in, uh, in the Bible, Jesus is in the wilderness and, you know, he's, he's fasting and, and, you know, this, this is how the whole IHOP KC thing was going to start. And, you know, they ran with that for, I mean, the entire time of the ministry has been in existence, but they, they, they made curriculum out of it for the school, right? I mean, they made audio series out of it. It just, it it was, it was what this whole entire organization was built off of. And, you know, they ran with this and, and it was all about, you know, how, you know, they gave the prophecy that this happened in, you know, the 418 prophecy, then what happened? Anna Kane died at, on April 18th at 418 PM, according to well, according to Mike Bickle, he even preached that sermon in April of 2021. However, the Star reported that, in fact, that actually was not true. 
Anna Kane did not die on April 18th. She actually died on April 19th. And it wasn't at 4.18 p.m. It was at 9.50 p.m. And they actually confirmed this on her gravestone as well as the death certificate. And you had all these people that were, you know, commenting on social media and they were, you know, you know, saying that just as, just when you thought that the burns couldn't get any worse, you couldn't feel any more betrayal from IHOP KC. This happens. And if there was ever, you know, a, a time to renounce the prophetic history, it would have been that. And remember, Bennett was praising the history back on the 5th. This report from the Kansas City Star, it comes out, I believe it was like May 15th, May 16th. It was somewhere right around there. Um, again, not long after he preached that sermon. And, you know, you know, God's going to give you Luke for it. You know, Anna Cade was saying, and then it gets exposed that this was a complete lie. And you had all these people that were just amazed. They wanted to be part of what God was doing, right? We want to give to IHOP KC. We want to be a part of this. Who wouldn't want to be part of what God is doing in the earth? I mean, this was something that even Tammy Woods had stated on social media after this was all exposed. So that leads me now into the announcement that Isaac Bennett made on May 19th at Fort Winter Church that that, that's basically a wrap, their final service. He talked about how this was unexpected. So maybe they, they didn't know that they were going to be closing Forerunner Church. Remember, they did make that you know announcement in the meeting that they would be winding down ministries. Now, whether they thought Forerunner Church was going to be part of that or not, I, you know, I don't know. But, but he said that it was, you know, it was time to close it down, that this would be the final service. There was apparently, it was, there was a packed house there, according to reports. But he said that with all that has gone on, you know, there's been a lot of pain in the community. He, he referenced the spiritual family and what just, what I, and, and I, and I just, I, I really should believe it at this point, but there was no mention made of the victims again in Isaac Bennett's statement here during the last service. It was more about the spiritual family, the community as a whole that's gone through a lot of pain. You know, they, they have been just unbelievable with failing to recognize the victims that had been hurt by Bickle. And not just Bickle, but other IHOP KC leaders that chose to cover things up and hide things and do whatever they could to protect the organization over the individual victims. Bennett had brought up a bunch of other IHOP KC leaders and thanked them. He was teary-eyed. And again, why are we thanking people that, you know, really played a part in so much of the cover-up? What are we thanking them for? I, I just, I, I don't get this at all. Uh, this has been met with, you know, different reaction on social media. Uh, some have come out. I know Jonah Hall, who is a member of the advocate group, he spoke out about this and said that it didn't have to be this way, but that IHOP KC has been more interested in preserving its prophetic history um, and keeping that intact rather than actually caring about the victims going forward with a third party investigation uh, just by simply closing down all these different ministries. Again, they are trying to escape accountability and think that this will somehow be easier for them in the long run. However, I will add in here myself that whatever sort of justice or accountability you think that you're going to escape in this world, you will not escape it when you go before God and have to give an account of your life unto him. And that is the absolute truth. Now, um, as Bennett continued on here, he talked about how, you know, pulling Forerunner Church, you know, that's it. They're done. They're going to, and again, he stresses 24 seven prayer will continue at IHOP KC. Uh, they are also apparently not going to be linking up with any other local church uh, whatsoever, church body. So they're going to be operating independent here. And people have been saying this is very reminiscent of what Mike Bickle did with with a Metro Christian Fellowship with MCF uh, nearly you know, a little over 20 years ago now um, at this point when Michael Sullivan was the pastor there and, you know, Bickle wanted to kind of, you know, move, you know, the prayer room away from the church at that time. So a lot of people are saying this kind of resembles that. Uh, you know, this was also filled with a bunch of, you know, spiritual, I call it spiritual mumbo jumbo type of language here from, you know, Bennett talking about how God has a new anointing for us. He's bringing us into a, a new season and with death comes resurrection. <laughs> Let me just say, 
some things are not meant to be resurrected. I referenced this when I said that instead of holding a 25th anniversary celebration, they should have been holding a funeral for IHOP KC. But as he continued on here, he said that IHOP KC will, this summer, he said, they'll be holding what they're going to be calling community nights. Uh, every Wednesday night throughout the summer where you know, they will gather together in prayer and they will seek God's wisdom and guidance for what's next for IHOP KC. And then in the fall, he talked about how they will be bringing back several ministries. They're going to be bringing back the, uh, the little kids ministry, the youth ministry, and the disciple ministry, but they're going to bring it back in this new reimagined type of a way. As again, he you know, added more spiritual mumbo-jumbo language here. A new wine God is giving us, new season, new anointing, fresh this, fresh that. Okay, blah, 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 blah. We've heard it all before. But with, again, no talk whatsoever of a third-party investigation. They don't want it. They've never wanted it. Stuart Greaves even referenced it, you know, all those months back. When he said that, well, if we bring in a third party, they're not going to just investigate Mike Bickle. They're going to investigate all of IHOP KC as a whole, which is really what they don't want. So, uh, again, this saga continues with IHOP KC, and they seem more content with just simply closing some things down and maintaining, holding on for dear life to that now completely debunked prophetic history, which was all based on lies by men who were engaged in inappropriate behavior. They were not acting Christ-like in any way. And some people have said, how dare you call their salvation into question? Well, you know what? Let me tell you this. The Bible is very clear that you will know people by their fruits. And based off what we now know about Mike Bickle, about Bob Jones, about Paul Cain, and so many others, they were engaging in patterns of sin. Okay, It is one thing that when you sin and you go and repent, truly ask the Lord for forgiveness, and then you turn away from that sin. However, when you engage in practices and patterns of sin that last for decades and decades, you're up there preaching and you're, you know, you're basically playing a character of a spiritual leader, a pastor, whatever you want to say, and then as soon as you leave the, the, you know, the stage, the podium, the pulpit, whatever, and then you go and do all these other horrible things behind the scenes, I'm sorry, but that to me does not represent in any way somebody who is living Christ-like. I will say that. But I want to hear from you on this. You all can let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. And I will include more information for you on this here in the description if you would like to check out some more about what Isaac Bennett had to say. Uh, I tell you what, you know, again, this exposure is going to continue and, you know, I will continue to keep you updated on all of it as it develops. Remember, if you enjoy and appreciate the work of this ministry, think about donating to help me out. Remember, you can hit the super thanks button on the YT video or join the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month. Patreon.com slash not by site news. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, let's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. This is an altar call. I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing here in the church and exposing these false prophets, we always want to give people the opportunity to receive Christ as Savior. So that being said, for anybody watching now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as Lord and Savior and you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world, as he died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and then jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. 
Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.